Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here then my name is Rosie and I graduated from the University of Oxford last year with a degree in Archaeology and Anthropology. Today's video is a requested video and that is some weird Oxford traditions. Oh yeah, we're gonna go in there. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about five main ones that you will come across in first year in this video and in next week's video I'm gonna talk about I think probably four or five again that will be specifically traditions surrounding Oxford exams. So this one's not gonna include anything to do with exams but believe me the exam traditions are weird. So number one is college marriages. You have probably heard from people like Eve and Manny and also Viola that we have husbands and wives and children and parents. <laughs> now these are obviously not legal wives and husbands and they're not biological children. They are simply people in the year below you if they are your children or your year if they are your spouse. What happens when you get there is that you have college parents these parents are usually one person from your subject who acts as your mentor throughout uni and their spouse who is meant to introduce you to another subject and it ends up being that you have this whole family because your, for example, my college mum did archaeology, her college husband did engineering so then my siblings do engineering and it means that you get to know more people because you have like a family dinner with just your family and it means you get to know people in other subjects as well as your own subject. Your husband or your wife <laughs> happens in Freshers' Week, usually throughout the first term. Mine did not happen in Freshers' Week. There was too much going on at first. You know, don't feel the need to have to do this whole marriage thing in the first week because you can't marry a man you just met. For starters, it is the most ridiculous tradition ever. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, it is. It's, it's ridiculous. I got there and I had no idea what was going on. There was people on the first day of Freshers' Week who clearly had had friends and family members that had been to Oxford and had already decided who they were gonna marry because they knew it was gonna be a thing. I had no idea. This was weird. I still think it's weird. All of my family still think it's weird. But basically, you make friends with someone and you decide to get married. It's not official. You can actually get divorced, but not many people take it that seriously. <laughs> I certainly did not. Your college children are your mentored child. <laughs> this is your child. So I had a college child who was a girl in the year below. So you get given your child in the summer between first and second year and they are a fresher incoming and your job is basically to just mentor them throughout starting. You get their carnations for them for their exams for first year as your parents will do for you when you're in first year and you do for your parents when they're doing their final exams and now I'll explain carnations in the exam video because that is a whole nother tradition that we're not going to get into now but essentially that is what the college family and marriage system is it's just a mentor bubble to try and make friends easier and have that person to rely on it doesn't always work but I find that the college parent and child system is way more effective and useful than the marriage thing. Number two is matriculation. Matriculation is a big word. I'd never heard of the word before before I started. I, I'm not sure many people will have heard the word before unless they really knew what was going on at Oxford. This doesn't just happen at Oxford either. I'm pretty sure it happens at Durham and Cambridge as well. I'm not sure about anywhere else but what it is is a day where you are officially enrolled to the university so at Oxford it is the second weekend so you're you come to the end of week one so you have freshers week which is week zero week one which is week one and then the weekend at the end of week one is your matriculation day on the Saturday you wear what's called subfusk it's basically a specific attire that's black and white. Here's a photo. You go to the Sheldonian Theatre in a big procession. You have to go in pairs and 
this is after you've signed a book so the first thing that happens on the day is you sign your name in a big book in the college like a record of all the people who've been there if you go to an older college it's likely that your book will have people in there who went to the college hundreds of years ago or at least within the last hundred years the st peter's book it's big so it was like this big and the pages were huge and you had to properly sign your name with this like special pen i can't write with with like those ink pens so my signature in that book is appalling i had one one shot one shot and i blew it but after so after you've signed your name you walk in pairs as i said basically you process there's a procession people take photos people's parents come and watch the whole university does it during the day so you have a slot during the day i think mine was at 11 a.m I do think the morning is better because you get like a big breakfast. I think we got a free breakfast on the morning, the matriculation, like registration day breakfast. Then you go and do your ceremony, you sit down in the Sheldonian, they talk to you in Latin for like an hour and a half. From my experience, no one has a clue what's going on. No one can understand what's being said either. But then you leave. That is it, you just leave. And for the rest of the day, the tradition is to just go to a field or a park like you would when you were younger and just drink. Like you don't have to, not everyone does, but that is the tradition. You just sit together as a cohort for your college and have a nice friendly day. And some people get drunk, other people don't. No one really cares, it's just nice. We played like games on the field, there was some sports going on. We're all bearing in mind in our special ye olde gear outfits. So you look weird, people taking photos of you all day. I really enjoyed it. Number three is crew dates. Crew dates are quite something. <laughs> They're the sort of thing that happens at other unis but under different names. I think at Cambridge they're called swaps and at Warwick they're called circles but they're all pretty much the same thing. It's mostly for sports teams and other societies but you can also just arrange them for things like birthdays and there's normally one at St Peter's for example where you have like first year boys, second year girls or first year girls, third year boys. It's just to get to know people. They are quite heteronormative so like you sit boy girl boy girl, you don't have to but that's the tradition and you do it in a restaurant. So there's about four different restaurants in Oxford that are like specifically for crew dating and you pay a set fee of £15, you get a set menu. If you don't want to eat you just pay £5 but I think they only let like four people from each group do that. You have to take your own wine. It's not necessary, like some people don't take it, other people take different drinks but wine is the tradition and it is very likely that you will get through the whole bottle because there's like drinking games and pennying where you throw it into people's drinks and if it lands in the drink they have to down it. There's other games like gecko um, and shoeing and the wine game where you pass around a full bottle of wine and the last person to take a drink has to go and buy the next one. There's loads of weird games like that and they are pretty fun. They can get a bit intense and for the first, in fact for all of them, I felt quite awkward by the end I usually leave early because and a lot of people do because when people start getting rowdy it's it's embarrassing because you know drunk people get too excited that sort of group gang mentality means people do things like stand on the tables and it just gets out of hand and disrespectful and I did not like that I liked crew dates but I hated how they always ended up feeling so wrong not like Riot Club-y, but if you've seen the Riot Club, you know they go and trash a restaurant and it is, it's a similar vibe just on a much, much different level. Number four is sconcing. Now this happens at crew dates, so I didn't actually mention it, but it is one of the drinking games. It's essentially like a posh never have I ever <laughs> Basically you stand up, you say, I sconce anyone who, and they're usually targeted, but the first couple should be like more open so you might say I sconce anyone who on freshers week didn't even make it out because they'd already passed out <laughs> and anyone who that happened to would stand up and take a drink they then get more and more targeted and people have gone so far I've seen to have like sconce databases 
it's very Oxford, like lists and actual spreadsheets of people's best sconces and ones that need to happen and some people like will go out and do things specifically for the sconce. And finally, number five is formal hall. So formal halls aren't really weird to most people, I don't think. To me it was quite weird because I'd never been in that sort of setting before where you'd sit down, have a three course meal in a gown, be waited on and have to like say grace and stuff. So what happens is, it could happen every day at some colleges but at St Peter's it happened twice a week. It happens later than normal hall. So normal hall is just like you get your food like a canteen, you sit and you eat it, you're not served or anything. Then formal hall is later, you dress up nicer, you wear your little gown and you, it's a bit more expensive. It's like £9 at St Peter's. You sit down you get served all of the courses, you know, like a starter, a main, a dessert and like coffees at the end. It is all literally like waiter service. But before you can even do that, they, they have a high table, like they would at like a wedding and they come in slightly later than everyone else. And as they come in, you all have to stand up until they have all like come in, sat down and like said grace. The food's good usually. Um, the vegetarian options are questionable. Sometimes they're amazing and they're better than the meat but other times they just have removed the meat but they are fun and you take your own wine or whatever else you want to drink on a normal one. They have like special ones which cost more where you get wine but usually you take your own. Then you go to the bar afterwards and they're really really nice for birthdays and you know like if you've got family there to treat them to I really like them, but they are a weird tradition, <laughs> especially the wearing gowns part and the happening multiple times a week part, because they also take place in like the really old dining halls, so they're quite intimidating at first, but they're good fun. And that is part one of this video, so make sure you come back next week for part two where I talk about all the weird exam traditions. I'll see you then. Give me a thumbs up if you actually do want part two, because I'm not going to make it if you don't want it. <laughs> Subscribe if you want to stick around? I'll see you in my next video. Bye!